Sky Striker just won't die, and this deck has been around for years at this point, but to be honest with you, I think it's actually just as powerful as ever right now. I think the deck is super underrated, and if people don't play around a ton of different Sky Striker cards, they could be in a lot of trouble. I want to show you guys my list for Sky Striker that actually showcases a going second build, where you can break a lot of boards, go in for OTK, but even if you're not OTKing, you can set up some really powerful boards to make it impossible for your opponent to come back. I think this strategy is something that people are not talking about enough right now in today's format and i really wanted to showcase it to you guys so with that being said let's get right into the video so i know it's been some time since i brought you guys a sky striker deck profile but i really wanted to show off a list that i've been kind of working on and i think this list is actually really really powerful it's a go second striker list i think going second striker is actually stronger than your typical go first builds i think the going first builds are just they don't do enough in today's format ending on a shizuku plus maybe a widow anchor is just not enough anymore so for that reason i think the going second build is very powerful especially when you incorporate cards like triple tactics thrust which is an absolutely busted card in this format specifically is just so so powerful and being able to search pretty much half your deck is just insane so that's why i think the going second list is just a little bit more powerful but let's start things off of course we are playing three ray the main monster of your deck this card is so important in pretty much everything you do you want to get to ray ray is so so powerful we're also playing one rose of course this is just the other name that we need i like playing the one rose i don't like playing two just because i really wanted to make space for board breakers hand traps and cards that I can go second with and just win the game outright. I don't really want to play a grind game. Yes, this deck can still grind, don't get me wrong, even if you're not OTKing right away, but I still think that this deck needs more of a push and having that one rose rather than playing two gives more space for other cards, of course, which is really, really powerful. And then I'm playing three Ash and three DD Crow. I think DD Crow is the most powerful hand trap in today's format, which is why I really like playing three Crow. Crow is so good into Unchained, into Purely, into Manage, into so many different decks dd crow is just so so powerful and i think it's really important so i do like playing the three crow but of course this can be any other hand trap you guys can play drool in the main deck if you wanted to i just think dd crow in the main deck is just so good into pretty much everything that uh it was just a mainstay in the main deck right so that's pretty much it for the monsters moving on to the spells we're playing a lot of spells as you guys can see but this deck pretty much lives off of its spells of course right so we're playing two engage of course because it's at two you want to be playing two this this card is insane we all know how powerful it is i don't want to explain it too much but another card that's insane and it is at three is three widow anchor widow anchor is so powerful it's a effect veiler for you essentially but it's also a snatch steal slash change of heart which is really really powerful right helps break a lot of boards that's why i like playing the three widow anchor and then of course we're also playing three linkage we're playing a go second build we were playing a deck that wants to otk and linkage helps otk and just beat your opponent so much faster so that's why we're maxing out on linkage we're playing two shark cannon so the reason i'm choosing to play two shark cannon rather than three or rather than one is because i think shark cannon just like dd crow is just really powerful this format even if you're using its effect just to banish a card not even to use the second effect where essentially you special summon it to your side of the field just banishing the card on its own is really powerful in today's format but of course you get that second effect you summon your opponent's monster you can use it as link fodder it becomes really powerful so i really like two shark cannon specifically in this format i think it's so so powerful then we're playing the one horny drones the one multi-roll the one area zero as well as the one afterburner the reason we're only playing one multi-roll even though it's at three now is because again this is a go second list i really wanted to make room for cards that could actually help me go second and win games multi-roll while it's really powerful it's one of those cards again that helps you in the grind game but you don't want to grind like i mentioned earlier it can grind you don't necessarily want to grind you get to multi-roll when you need to get to multi-roll in this deck right so keep in mind this deck just goes through itself so fast because you have cards like engage because you have cards like thrust right so for that reason i think the one multi-roll is all you're going to need one area zero and one afterburner kind of all the same thing afterburner is actually not like spot removal in general is actually not as powerful this format as you would think and the reason for that is because essentially purely makes it so that their monsters sometimes are untargetable so this you know doesn't really out any purely monsters this is not good against unchained at all which is one of the best decks in today's format so that's why i still like playing the one because it's really good into a lot of the rogue matchups but this is definitely a card that you guys will side out a lot into those kind of matchups like unchained and purely right because this card essentially does nothing against them so the one afterburners then we're playing you guys are going to see everything after this that's it for the striker cards all over here right so these are all the striker cards after the afterburners here you guys are all going to see the board breaking cards and the cards to get through your deck as fast as possible so i'm playing three thrusts as well as three talents now you guys might be wondering why are you playing three thrusts and three talents well i want to see talents talents is really really powerful but if i see talents and thrust it means 
that I can now thrust into something else, which is obviously really important as well. That's why I like playing the three thrusts, three talents, and then we're playing the one change of heart, the two lightning storm, the one harpy's feather duster, one herald of the abyss. Those are my targets for the thrust if it's not talents. And the reason for that is because Herald of the Abyss, of course, is good against purely. It's good into a lot of things in general. It's just spot removal that doesn't destroy, which is really, really nice because it plays around like a lot of the unchained effects, right? So Herald of the Abyss is really good. It also plays around the purely stuff. Harpies and Lightning Storm, I think this is just self-explanatory. We don't want to deal with back row. A lot of people are not playing around Lightning Storm, so it actually hurts a lot of the front row decks as well. If they summon their monsters in attack position, boom, you pretty much have a Red Geki, which is insane. You guys can actually play one Lightning Storm, one Red Geki if you actually you wanted to i think regeki is very underrated this format so you guys can actually thrust for regeki if your opponent plays around lightning storm and summons everything in defense you can then search regeki which is really nice so technically you can play one on one i just decided to play two lightning storm because i think the back row matchups are really important just getting rid of a lot of their back row that's why i'm playing two lightning storm change of heart of course change of heart take your opponent's monsters same thing with shark cannon same thing with widow anchor you want to take your opponent's monsters and you want to use them to link climb right so that's essentially how you remove a lot of cards your opponent controls with this deck right so that's it for those kind of spells then of course we're playing the one rota we're playing the one called by the grave of course so rota getting you to ray is very powerful i did want to mention as well i don't know if i did already but thrust also searches engage so that's really powerful because if you do open a lot of your board breakers and then your opponent activates a monster effect then you can thrust for the engage and then you can get a lot of your sky striker engine moving from there right so that's why i like playing the three thrusts as well lastly we're playing three imperm we're pretty much playing nine hand traps so the three ash the three crow and the three imperm imperm is pretty good in today's format as well imperm of course is just a generic card and if you are going first you can set it if you are going second you can use it as a board breaker even if you're not using it as a hand trap to stop your opponent from making plays if you just draw it for a turn as your sixth card whatever it is you can activate imperm just as a board breaking card negate an effect let's say your opponent has a baron on their side of the field you know the bear and you can start a lot of your plays right so i like three imperm as well 40 cards in the main deck very solid very tight i think this is really really powerful just because everything here does something which is really important you're not trying to brick on this deck you really want to play cards that are going to get you somewhere break your opponent's boards and as soon as you see a single ray or as soon as you're able to get to a single link monster with linkage you're trying to go for otk anyway so i really like this main deck very powerful main deck and then of course we're going to be getting into our extra deck over here so we're playing the one zeke the one azalea you can definitely play two z but the one azalea can't come up so i do like playing the one azalea again just spot removal three kagari three shizuku two hayate this is pretty standard stuff here but we're not actually on the kaina we decided to play something a little bit different here because new cards came out in age of overlord specifically sp little knight which is absolutely insane i'll get into that in a second but i think two hayate is all you need you can definitely be playing three and cut one of these cards over here out but i do like playing the two hayate you have to be at least be playing two we're playing the one dark dark is pretty good into some matchups this is the card that i would say you can cut for a third hayate that being because you can make azalea now and azalea is really nice as a generic link too uh so is zeke technically right so that's why you don't really necessarily need the dark but i do like playing the one dark because of course if you have a ray and then you to snatch seal one of your opponent's monsters essentially with any of these cards you can make a dark which is really nice here playing the one axis code talker of course so you can get to this and just try to go for game as well playing the one ip mascarena as well as the one sp little knight two very powerful cards in today's format i will say again sp little knight i say this in a lot of my videos is an expensive card and if you guys are trying to play sky striker and you guys don't have access to sp little knight you guys can cut this card like i said you have access to a third hayate you can play more link monsters so many different options for you i just wanted to give you guys those options but optimally you guys will be playing the sp little knight and i am playing the one zeus the reason i'm playing zeus even though i'm playing no Ixies monsters is because we can take our opponent's Ixies monsters we can take purely monsters we can take any you know, generic AC's monsters of your opponents makes the generic AC's monsters, right? So you can always just do that. It kind of breaks the board because you not only steal the monster, you can attack with it, slap your own Zeus on the field, right? Which is really, really powerful. So of course, I do like playing the one Zeus. Again, another card you guys can swap out, but I just so powerful when it does come up, right? And then lastly, I want to show you guys a quick side deck that you guys can play with this deck. Keep in mind, side deck is always going to be up to personal preference. If your locals is a bunch of combo players, then you want to be playing a lot of combo hate. If your locals is a bunch of back row players, then you want to be playing a lot of back row hate. But in this one, I'm just going to show you guys something that deals with a little bit of everything, which is really powerful, right? So three drone Lockbird, really good into a lot of different matchups as well. But this is, I think, a little bit more niche than something like Ash Blossom and Diddy Crow this format. These two are just good into everything. So is Imperm. This is really good into some matchups, but not great into matchups like Unchained and whatnot, right? So that's why I'm playing it in the side deck instead of the main. I like the Pancratops going second. You can side this in. Very, very powerful. Gets itself off 
the field, which means that you can break your opponent's board and then you can use all your Sky Striker spells anyways, right? So that's why I like the one Pankatops. Three Cosmic Cyclone. Now you guys might be wondering, why are you playing Cosmic Cyclone? You're already playing main deck hate before back row. But you don't play any main deck hate that outs anti-spell. An anti-spell is an auto-lose. Like you auto-lose to anti-spell in this deck, right? So I want to be playing Cyclone so that we don't lose to cards like anti-spell or any other floodgates in general. And then we're playing three evenly match. Evenly match is really powerful into Rescue Ace, really powerful into Manadium, really powerful Labyrinth as well, just a little bit of everything, man. Evenly match is so good. And even if you're not OTKing your opponent, again, like I said, this deck doesn't want to be able to break boards and OTK when it can, but I would give up OTK my opponent if it means just outright like blowing them out, right? Getting rid of everything on their side of the field, even if you're able to set up a little bit of a board i think once you get rid of a lot of your opponent's resources it becomes really tough for them to out your boards that's why i like playing three evenly match also evenly match you get to search off of thrust as well that's another option for you another card that you can search off of thrust but you can also side in when you're forced to go first is 2d barrier i like d barrier into the branded matchups into the manadium matchups calling synchro calling uh fusion whatever you guys want to call it, it becomes really powerful this calling uh Xyz into purely as well is pretty cool as well so i really like uh, d barrier i think this card is really powerful and again i'm just playing two one because you can thrust into it if you want to but when you're forced to go first this is a really powerful card siding in and then i like playing three solemn judgment of course because like i mentioned going first again if you are forced to go first your opponent makes you go first just ending on like shizuku plus a widow anchor or shizuku plus a shark cannon sometimes is not enough hopefully you have some hand traps hopefully maybe you have an imperm but a lot of the time it's just not enough of a board and so being able to end on that board plus a judgment makes it a lot more powerful right so that's why i like playing the judgment but again keep in mind all of this is going to be up to personal preference. Whatever you guys think is best suited for your locals or whatever regionals or your area, that's what you're gonna wanna do. I just wanted to show you guys a template for what you guys can play and uh, just show you guys that it can be really powerful as it is. But this is my deck. I think Sky Striker, the going second build here is so powerful and underrated in today's format. People won't really see it come in. And I feel like a lot of people won't really be able to play around it because they don't exactly know how, which is really powerful. And if you guys wanna play Sky Striker, I think you guys gotta try this list out. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That is my take on Sky Striker for the November 2023 format. This deck is really, really powerful. It's really, really consistent. It breaks boards, it OTKs, it does so many different things. And honestly, I just think in today's format, people aren't prepared for the deck. And when you're not prepared for it, I think it can do really, really well. Thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. If you guys haven't already, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one. We upload seven days a week on the channel, five shorts per week and you guys are gonna get two full videos deck profiles combo videos and a ton of stuff in between so make sure you guys subscribe to stay tuned into all of that thank you guys all for watching i appreciate every single one of you with that thank you signing out peace